Pokemon Sun and Moon are some of the Pokemon games of all time. The Alola region introduced some of my favorite Pokemon, like Kamoa and Vikavolt, but the Gen 7 games never really did it for me. So when I was the ripe young age of 16, I decided to not spend my 60 Canadian Monopoly dollars on the new Pokemon sequels, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Now that I'm 21 and literally make Pokemon videos on the internet, I think it's time I give them a shot. So I loaded up Pokemon Ultra Moon and we got started. Or at least, I wish we got started, but this game has, I don't know, like 18 million cutscenes before the game starts, so I'll take this time to quickly explain my rules. I use standard hardcore Nuzlocke rules, so in addition to the regular Nuzlocke rules, I also don't use items in battle, I play on set mode, and I can't overlevel the next Kahuna or Totem Pokemon. Oh, and I also don't use Z moves in Gen 7. By the way, my name is Palm and Peas, or P for short, and let's do this. After watching Oppenheimer twice, the cutscenes are finally done and London the Litten joins the team. We breeze through the intro to the game, grabbing a few encounters along the way. In the Alola games, Route 1 is split into three subsections, Haoli Outskirts, Trainer School, and Regular Route 1. I grab Vienna, Winnipeg, and Memphis here. Ilma appears out of the shadows in Haoli City and I handle him before catching Manchester the Magnemite and get to Route 2, where we catch Atlanta the Ekans. We check out Mantine Surfing, which I'm sure isn't the worst minigame of all time, catch a Zubat named Cairo, and it's time for Totem 1, Alolan Raticate. This one isn't too bad, we've got plenty of checks into this thing at this stage in the game, like Intimidate Ekans and our Steel-type Magnemite. We do some Intimidate pivoting and take down our first totem of the run, let's keep it going. Route 3 is open now, so Philly the Mankey joins the team. Lily does whatever the fuck Lily does, but we do get a cutafly named Rome and a Psyduck named Glasgow out of it, so I can't complain. We also meet these Power Ranger villain looking motherfuckers, but they creep me out. Why do you have a mustache on your mask? Stop. This is in 2013. After running away as fast as possible, it's time for our fight with Hala in the Mele Mele Island Grand Trial. Hala isn't too bad. Without knowing the movesets on his Pokemon, I'm a little worried about coverage, but Fighting types normally have either dark or rock type coverage, so Rome the Cutifly doesn't have a whole lot to worry about here. I am worried about guts, so I'm not risking any status, but Rome has Draining Kish, keeping her nice and healthy as she brings down Machop. Makuhita loves spamming Sand Attack at poor little Rome, so I do let Cairo come in and get the KO with super effective Wing Attack. Hala's Ace Cabrawler literally can't do anything to Rome either, as she took 7 damage from a Z move. We win that battle against Hala, and we've secured our first Grand Trial of the run. Choo Choo, all aboard train for Akala Island. Wait, there's no room for me? Oh my god, I need to Mantine Surf across? Fuck off. This took me like 20 minutes, I'm not even joking. Now that we're here though, I do get a super warm welcome from Sina, who tries to end my run with her Glaceon. Like seriously, I have unevolved bonds. I hope you step on Legos. Pikachu Valley is, uh something all right but i'm not interested in joining a cult today so we head through route 4 and panola ranch grabbing tokyo the picky peck and austin the Mareep along the way we also grab a fomantis named la but fomantis is trash until it evolves so we'll worry about that one later gladon makes his first appearance to sell tickets to his britney spears impersonator concert but his Yu-Gi-Oh card of a pokemon isn't too scary to take down it's totem time this one is a Raquinid in the Ultra games, so it's a little unfair, but we've got no choice, so let's do it. A Raquinid gets a plus one speed boost, and I fucking hate this freak. It has the ability Water Bubble, which doubles the damage of water moves and halves the damage of fire moves. That's really balanced with the level cap of 20. Oh yeah, and it's raining, so Bubble from this freak is 40 base power, times 2 for the water bubble and times 1.5 for the rain, meaning Piplup's first move is 120 base power. Did I mention the level cap is 20? Wait, 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 I'm actually not done complaining yet. This monster also calls a Dupiter as its ally, and guess what ability this one has? Holy sh**, my life is so hard. Austin took way too much damage coming in after Atlanta paralyzed it, so he takes one for the team after getting some chip with Thundershock. <laughs> You serious? What is this Pokemon? Is this a ROM hack? It has a Wakan Berry? Winnipeg can't finish it off, but without a Wakan Berry, Manchester can totally finish it off, right? No! Since this totem Pokemon is wild, it has random AI. So the random AI uses two bubbles that would have been resisted into Winnipeg, so I just traded a British city for a Canadian one, but my passport says I have to be cool with that. Vienna can finish off this monster and its little sidekick with a couple of acrobatics. Acrobatics. But now I've got two deaths, no steel type, and a charge bug as my only electric type. Awesome. 
We've got the fire totem coming up next, so what better way to counter it than with my own water bubble monster? Okay, I guess I got a mudbrain named Milan in Route 6 that can kind of help. After being forced at gunpoint into a battle royale, we can get up to Whale of Volcano Park, where we catch a Fletchling. Yay! We get up to the level cap at the start of the trial, which is where the cap ends, and play I Spy with a Lolan Marowak, leading to our third totem fight. Totem Marowak stresses me out, mostly because I'm kind of paranoid that it's going to have like a thick club or something, since this game clearly loves to give totems good items. Atlanta uses Thief just in case to avoid that, but it didn't have anything anyways. This paranoia actually cost Atlanta his life, after a double up from the sexy lizard and a crit from Totem Marowak that brought him down. Milan also gets sacrificed, but that's because I'm a f***ing idiot and I forgot that it gets a plus 2 speed boost at the start of the battle. Yeah, one speed drop from Bulldoze isn't gonna cut it. Not Jupiter did come in to clean up the fight though, winning us our third totem battle and our second in a row losing two Pokemon. Our death box is looking amazing and it's time to keep that going. I spent 10 minutes trying to grab this Wimpod and then activate its Wimp out ability, wasting my time. Awesome. At least I got a young goose on Route 8. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. Time for total number 4, a Lorantis, just like the original games. Lorantis gets completely walled by Crobat, so this should be an easy one. Well, I'm not throwing a London away, so Tokyo needs to take the L here. Sorry about that. Cairo does come in and turns this into a crit contest that Cairo loses because he never gets one even with cross poison, but at least he still wins the battle. We're not gonna beat this run, are we? Totem number 4 down, and all that's left is the Grand Trial. Time for our consolation prize in the Lush Jungle, and it's a Steenie. That's pretty good. She's named Toronto since I'm lacking some Canadian representation. I go back to Route 7 and grab an Alolan Diglett, meaning I can dodge one in Diglett Tunnel, which nets me a Larvitar, which is going to be pretty sick. We walk for a while, and now we're at Kony Kony City, where we get an Eviolite and the Evolution Stones. This lets Not Dupiter evolve into a Polyrath, which is good enough that I'll stop calling it Not Jupiter. We grab a Stuffle and a Phantom on the way to the Grand Trial, but before that, we spin a wheel to choose the Armor Fossil as our Fossil Encounter. Welcome Berlin to the team. With a bunch of Pokemon that should be pretty good for Rock types, it's time for our battle against Olivia. Okay, Olivia's team is really annoying. She has an Anorith, a Lilip, and her Ace, Lycanroc. The problem with this is that since LA and Toronto are both trash until they evolve, I don't have any Grass types on my team. My solution was to bring a bunch of ground and fighting types since I had a lot of those in the box. Well, Anorith can't get crit by Philly's cross chop, making this interaction just a lower accuracy randomizer. Philly did manage to get through it, but not by a whole lot. When the leap comes out second, I'm really on the back foot here. My best Pokemon being a water type is really not ideal. I don't want to swap anything into a Giga Train here, so Philly holds his own life in his hands. Or gloves. Does Primeape have hands? He misses the first cross drop, but barely survives to get a second chance that he doesn't throw away. Two down, one to go. Philly has done enough though, so it's Dallas the Doug Trio's turn. She becomes one of, if not the most underwhelming Pokemon I've ever used in a run. Like, takes two thirds the damage from not stab bite, and then gets outsped by a Pokemon with 30 less base speed. That was tough. Portland does come in and clean up Lycanroc, but we continue our streak of losing Pokemon in important battles. That's the grand trial of Akala Island done, with two more islands to go. We finally have a usable grass type now that the level cap is up to 33, so LA and Toronto are now a Lorantis and a Serena. This lets us create the fire water grass core for our team, which is fundamental to higher level Nuzlocke. Using three types that resist each other's super effective moves lets us get Pokemon in more freely. For example, if a grass move is coming out into my water type, I can pivot into my fire type who resists it, letting us get our ideal Pokemon out without any risk of dying to a critical hit. Some other solid cores are Steel Fairy Dragon or Fighting Dark Psychic. Being able to get what Pokemon you want out and doing it safely is a super important skill to have in Nuzlocke. That was boring. You know what's worse? Hano Resort. Like seriously, I do not care about this zoo submarine hybrid thing. We do go back to Akala Island and grab Sacramento the star you on the beach though. Time for Ula Ula Island. Professor McDreamy tells us to do something. I don't know. I was distracted by something. And we just keep walking straight. A tree tries to jump us, but I threw a metal ball at the criminal and now it has to listen to me apparently. You know what doesn't have to listen to me? Beldum, since I ran out of Pokeballs and it took itself out with its only move. Takedown. No Metagross for me again. This feels just like my M only run. After we go on a Charger Bug scavenger hunt, it's time for our next trial, 
this time against Totem Togedemaru. Togedemaru is a little annoying, but overall it's really manageable. Paris the Phantom does some heavy lifting in this fight. His grass typing resists electric stab moves, and he also learns Leech Seed and Reflect by level up. Since these totem fights are basically a 2v1, which is bull****, but don't get me started, that means Paris can set up two Leech Seeds against both opponents. With our team having double recovery, reflect damage reduction, and some super effective moves from London and Vienna, we can pretty easily chip down Togedomaru and win our fifth totem fight of the run. Now that we've actually beaten a major battle with no casualties, we can comfortably move towards our next totem. Oh wait, did I say comfortably? I meant absolutely batch insanely. I lost Cairo to f***ing Guzma. Guzma! It's okay, I'm sure I'll get a great flying type to replace him. Well that's okay, I'm sure I'll get a useful encounter soon. This game sucks. I hate this game. Our next totem is in the abandoned mark, so after going to Foster's home for imaginary friends, it's time for Totem Mimikyu. This freak gets an Omni Boost to start the fight, so that's awesome. I can't really handle this thing at plus one attack, so Boston the Beware needs to take an L here. She learns Baby Doll Eyes, which is a priority attack lowering move, and lowers Mimikyu's attack to minus two before going down. Toronto breaks the disguise with U-Turn, and Rome sets up a Reflect. With all the prep done, we've got one more step before we close out the battle. Remember like 15 seconds ago when I talked about my sh** encounters? Yeah, Albany the Ariados was one of them. I didn't think I'd need to mention it, but she's actually going to be kind of important. Probably the first important Ariados ever. She can get off some Nightshade and some Shadow Sneak Chip before sacrificing herself, letting London come in and finish off the job. We might have lost two team members again, but I'm okay with that, even if Boston might have been our cutest team member. We're at... Nine, that's Jesus Christ. And we're not even done with this island. Hey, it's Grimsley, you know, like from Utava. We dismantle Team Skull, which is fun only because I get to kick this guy's ass again after he killed my Crobat, and now we can continue with the game. Oh yeah, encounters. I got a Tentacruel, a Floet, and a Scraggy, plus a dead Pharaoh, but that's because I'm an idiot. I also paid for the Pokemon Center. Is this fucking America? We beat up Brittany again, and it's time for the Grand Trial. Did I spam the A button while scrolling Twitter and accidentally enter this fight without prepping? That's a bad question. It's time for Nanu. Nanu's team is kind of trash, not gonna lie. Like, Sableye can't touch a fairy type, even though I don't have one. Krokrok isn't even fully evolved, and Alolan Persian is a trash tier Pokemon. It's so bad that Game Freak actually made another regional form Meowth to replace it in Gen 8. London dealt with Sableye with a few Fire Fangs, Jacksonville the Jealous and destroyed Krokrok, and Salt Lake City was with me and it fully walled Persian, taking a Dark type Z move for only a quarter. That was an easy grand trial. Maybe I shouldn't plan teams for fights. Anyways, see you later Ulu Island and hello Pony Island. Wait, not hello Pony Island. Where the f is Aether Paradise? Guzma gets rolled cause he's a scrub, and then we find out that all the blondes we've met along the way are related. Wow. I had no idea. We fight Lusamine, and her AI must be random, since I almost lose Starmie to a Thunder Punch. Somehow, we have no deaths though. Lusamine and Guzma Doctor Strange Danny Phantom themselves into another dimension, and I'm sure we'll never see them again, so no worries. Time for Pony Island for real this time. Captain Mina tells us not to bug her and go find Hapu instead, which is like, really real. We get a whole bunch of new encounters here, Waylord, Granbull, Inke, Magikarp, and Fortress, even though that's an evolution, but not an encounter, but you know what I mean. The B team is going to get some action here, since the big boys are pushing the level cap, and they need a break. Bam! New team, new me. We walk in on Hapu getting named Kahuna of Pony Island, which kind of feels like walking into the room when someone's getting changed. Like, I'm sure this was like an emotional and vulnerable moment. We go to Executor Island, and you'll never guess what we caught. Wait, how did you know? Are you re-watching this? Yeah, we got an executor. Grass Dragon is pretty solid. Moon Flute acquired. Now we've got to go through Pony Canyon to play these super cool looking recorders, so it's time for a gauntlet. These Power Ranger guys tell us something, but I spammed A through it, so it doesn't matter. Good news, we caught a Bulldor named Barcelona, which isn't the worst, I guess. Bad news, some random scientist executed Tampa Bay and Memphis with a Magnazone. There goes my only other fire type. Tonal Kamoo is going to get an Omni Boost at the start of the fight, which is a little cringe for a Pokemon with these stats. I want to use Haze to avoid this, but the only option available is Honchkrow. I didn't grab anything at the Ho'oli Cemetery, so 
we scoop one up with duplicate claws, use the dusk stone that we found on Pony Island to evolve it, and now we've got the fanciest bird of all time on the team. With Helsinki the Haze user, we walk into the den and find Totem Komoo. This thing needs to be stopped and my fancy bird is here to do it. We press Haze and bring it back to neutral as it brought out Noivern as its ally Pokemon. That's a little awkward since the next part of the plan was to use Toronto to set up a reflect. Yeah, sorry Toronto. You kind of deserved it. Have you seen these housing prices? Jacksonville also needs to make a sacrifice here since Fuji can't take two hits without reflect. Our pink jellyfish lady actually saves the entire run since a dazzling gleam wastes Kamoa's held. Uh, Roselli Berry? Another damage reducing berry by the way. Did I mention that I like this game? Thank you Jacksonville for your hard work and for saving the run. Fuji cleans up the fight using 4 times super effective stab moonblast to bring down the dragon fighting type. One totem to go. Me and Lily perform our little flute recital, it was very cute, all the moms cried. Except for Lusamine, cause she got tossed out of another dimension, looking like she's scarred for life. I would be too if this thing was trying to kill me. Oh wait, it is? Fantastic. Gill Wings almost KOs London since it had power gem for coverage, but the random AI coin flips land in our favor. It's time for another minigame, and boy, do I love minigames without a touchscreen. Or, um, without a working touchscreen. I'm playing on a 3DS, okay Game Freak? It's time for Ultra Necrozma in Ultra Megalopolis. Megalopolis. Which is over the Elite Four level cap and has some monster stats. The only option here is to cheese it. We caught an Alolan Raticate a while ago in the Vernon Cavern, and this thing learns Endeavor, which brings your opponent's HP to the same as yours. In combination with a Focus Hash to bring Necrozma to 1 HP and a priority move in Sucker Punch, that's an easy win. How does it feel to get rolled by Eradicate? We just saved two worlds, so obviously I'm feeling pretty good. Let's change that. Mina's Trial is new in this game, and it's pretty fucking tough. You need to fight all the captains on all the islands to get Flower Petals. We have almost no room in the level cap and 6 tough fights with no calcs and no info. What could go wrong? A lot. Ilma's Gumshoes apparently survives a close combat from Philly, so Hyperfang plus defense drops equals dead angry pigman. I think I'm pretty good at math, but that one still doesn't make sense. The second battle is in the lush jungle, but it's not a grass type battle, it's a water type one against Lana. Why? I don't know, this game's just trying to fuck with me. With my team prepped for grass types, I somehow lost two of my three fairy types, Fuji and Rome. Why them? Great question, I don't know. Now my only fairy type is not Intimidate Grand Bull. Yeah. Captain 3 fight against Kiwawe didn't go any better. Washington DC couldn't take a Shadow Bone with all that HP, and the random hiker fight afterwards almost cost me Barcelona. At least Sophocles didn't kill any of my Pokemon, but he literally didn't have a chance. The last battle wasn't against a Captain, but a Kahuna. Again, I planned for a Ghost type team, but at least I had Salt Lake on the team, so he kind of swept right through it all. All said and done, I lost another 4 Pokemon, plus the 2 from the Scientist in Pony Island and 2 from the Komoo Trial. So that equals 17 deaths. Holy shit, I'm bad at this game. At least we're done with the last trial of the run. Oh, there's a totem? Of course there is. Rabombi gets a double Omni Boost. Yeah, you heard that right. A plus two to every single stat to start the battle. I can't even use Haze here since Fancy Bird is a dark type and will get absolutely rolled by Rabombi's stab fairy moves. Thankfully, Tulsa the Tentacruel does resist all its stab moves. Screeches bring Rabombi down to minus two defense and then Toledo the Talonflame can finish off the job with a 110 base power acrobatics. Rabombi did call a Pelipper of all things as its ally, so Toledo did give himself to the cause. Another death. That's 18. But we're done with all the trials, leaving only the grand trial of Pony Island. Hapu finds us right after fighting the Polly Pocket bug type, and now it's time to meet her at Executor Island. Does she have an Executor? No. Why are we here? That's a great question. Her ground types weren't too much of a threat due to my copious amounts of water and flying types. But I do forget that poison is weak to ground, so there goes Tulsa, 19 deaths. Apu can't really do anything though, as we get through her trial relatively unscathed, officially beating the final trial of the Alola region. It's time for Mount Lanakila. Britney Spears does try to jump us, but since Tucson can finally evolve into a Tyranitar, we do get through him pretty easy. 
Our final encounter is Warsaw the Sneasel, but he's not important anyway, so I don't even know why this is in the script. We get through the final Victory Road-esque gauntlet and arrive at the doorstep of the Elite Four. I tried to build the most diverse team possible, since I don't even know what types are in the Elite Four. So, I landed on London the Incineroar with Flare Blitz, Darkest Lariat, and Bulk Up, Georgetown the Gyarados with Dragon Dance, Aqua Tail, and Bulldoze, Edmonton the Alolan Executor with Dragon Hammer, Leaf Storm, and Flamethrower, Florence the Frostlass with Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, and Psychic, Tucson the Tyranitar with Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Fire Fang, and Berlin the Bastiodon with Ancient Power, Flash Cannon, and Thunderbolt. What will I do if there's a Fairy type trainer? I don't know, probably wipe? Let's do this thing. I'll pick the ground door first. Wait, that's Olivia. Oh, it's a rock type. This symbol is rock? Fuck this game. This battle was hard. Berlin 1v1 Armaldo, effectively making this a 5v5, and then getting Georgetown in safe on a ground type move from Probo Pass, she baited rock type moves, meaning we can switch into Tucson relatively safely. He takes care of the big nose rock man and then Lycan Rock with four times super effective counter threatened his life. Edmonton can avoid that with Special Leaf Storm, leaving Olivia with two Pokemon. Gigalith has monster physical defense, so I need to get Edmonton back in, but without the stat drops from Leaf Storm. I pivot through Georgetown and Tucson on Bulldozes and Stone Edge until the special defense boosting Sandstorm ends. Without the boost, Edmonton can come back in and finish off another rock type. Cradilly is the last Pokemon, and I hate Cradilly. Grass Rock is a super annoying typing for my team. Since the AI hates using speed-lowering moves if it's already faster, London only needs to take one Rock Tomb after a couple of Intimidates, so that lets him take it down with a couple of Flare Blitzes. We've survived our first Elite Four battle, and I don't know if we're going to make it through our second one. Ghost is a pretty good matchup for us actually. London is part Dark type, and Florence can deal some fast, powerful, super effective Ghost type damage. Bunek goes down to London before he swaps into Georgetown and then into Florence for the KO on Palosand, who is out second. Delmise gets rolled by London too, its best move into him was Slam, that's how easy this was. Ace Roll has got a Frostlass of her own, but even after landing a Blizzard, London can still handle it with a Darkest Lariat. Ace Roll's last Pokemon is a Drift Blim, but that gets rolled by Tyranitar, who resists Ghost moves and one-shots with a super effective Rock Slide. That's half of the Elite Four down, and that one was pretty easy. At least this symbol looks like what it actually is, Flying type. Not my best matchup, but it could be worse, I guess. Her lead Braviary hits like a truck, even though Tucson resisted it, but the truck wasn't going fast enough to stop a rock slide from getting the one shot. Halucha is second, and it probably has flying press, meaning we gotta pivot through Florence, who's a moon, and then into Georgetown for the Intimidate. She can pretty safely one for one trade here, leaving Georgetown at low HP and bringing down Kahili's second Pokemon. Mandibuzz is a little tanky, which I didn't actually know until I was in the middle of this battle, and I think Berlin can deal with it. Or he could if this tough looking guy here didn't have the special attack of Cleffa. Oh, and this freak has Bone Rush, so Berlin almost gets decimated. Edmonton comes in to try to take it down, but Kahili abandons her dignity and tries to use confusion strats on us, which is really annoying. Eventually, after a bunch of swapping, Sandstorm Chip from Tucson eventually takes down this monster. Tucanon is fourth, and I think Tucson can handle this pretty well. A signature move, Beak Blast, is negative priority, so we can simply KO it in one shot before. It... Oh, Z moves. Yeah. Well, there goes my Tyranitar. Berlin comes in and takes this thing down since it resists to all its moves. Oricorio is last for Kahili, but London does solid enough neutral damage to take it down. Our death count is up to 20, and we've still got two fights left. Oh god. The last battle of this Elite Four is Molain and his Steel types. He leads with Klefki and it really can't touch Berlin. He might have the special attack of Kleffa, but at least he has the physical attack of... Spritzy? God, why did I bring this Pokemon? Eventually, Berlin wins the 1v1, but this was like watching two toddlers try to figure out how to hurt each other for the first time. His second Pokemon is... Metagross. Are you serious? Well, we're f I don't know if you guys remember my R only run in Omega Ruby, but Metagross requires really tight plans to handle, or you end up relying on RNG like I did. And in a run like this, I have no plans, let alone any solid ones. I tried pivoting around, but since it has clear body, I can't use Intimidate to lower its attack. Out of all options, I try to do some damage with Edmonton, but after he falls, there's nothing we can really do. It takes down every single one of our team members, bringing our death total to 25, 
and losing us our Pokemon Ultra Moon blind hardcore Nuzlocke. In hindsight, I probably should have sacked Berlin to get the speed drop from Hammer Arm, and maybe I could have worked something out, but I don't even know what he had in it back. So guys, this was my first attempt at Pokemon Ultra Moon doing a hardcore Nuzlocke. That went better than I thought, honestly, like, I'm glad I did get enough encounter to throw away 25. I think I played okay, I guess, I don't know. It was kind of hard, and especially with no info, I was really struggling. Let me know if you want to see me give it another shot in the comments down below, or by hitting the like button. How do we feel about this more fast-paced style of video? I tried to kind of explain my thought process still, but in more of an overall way instead of like move by move. Let me know which style you guys like better. But with that being said guys, I've been Pom and Peas, or just P for short, and thanks for watching.